Hello, hello. Welcome to the world of Ashen. Uh, just starting up a new game here for you guys. Uh, I play a little bit on a different account, on a different save, but um, just kind of wanted to show it to you from the beginning so uh, you can get an idea of, you know, what's what this game is about. Um, the character select is pretty limited in what you can do. Uh, obviously, you can see there's no, like, real faces or anything. Um, but you can kind of go through these randomizations, which some of them I found to be pretty funny. I like the mustaches on the guys. <laughs> Look at that beard. But yeah, so yeah, the, there's no like real facial features you can choose and there's no like, you're not starting with like, you're not choosing stats or anything like that. Um, in fact, I'm not even sure if this is a pure RPG. Like, I, I don't know if you're actually putting stats points into stats. I haven't gotten to that in my other game yet, and I've been playing it for quite a while. Alright, I'm just going to go with this dude. And now we'll check out the story a little bit. Because that's kind of... This game's a lot like Dark Souls, but the story is kind of where it diverges a little bit. Maybe you'll see that here. stars the ashen fly beneath the nine realms moon among the tree of worlds many branches proudly standing upon the darkness its roots delving into caverns where light will never venture it was when a single great ashen flew down to rest upon her bows, that the light woke among the realms. After eons, the great ashen grew weak with age and fell from the tree of worlds, resting upon the plains of darkness. Hey Jay, how's it going? What few breaths remained. In the throes of death, the light dimmed, and the Ashen's final three breaths became the three golden ages of light. The first age saw three creatures of the Dark Plains rise above all others. The Elder Dark fed upon the light and thrived. The second marked the coming of the listener matriarchs, titans who revered the light. The third breath was the age of man, Geffen's children. When the final breath ended, there would be a time of darkness. In that black age, the cities of man fell into ruin toppled by war and emptied by pestilence and famine. Uh, this is a game I'm just starting ash. up, but I have another game that I play a little bit in just to get an idea of what's going on in it. From dust to flesh. So not completely from darkness fresh. to radiance. Soon the ashen will be reborn from the ruins of its old body and a new age of light will begin. I served the Ashen long ago, a guardian to its waning light, even though it broke me with its brilliance. Now, look to the mountain peak, for that is where fresh hope blooms. Yeah, I'm liking it too. Ashen is reborn. 
Behold the first like the art glimmer style. of the light that will sweep the darkness Quite a bit, from actually. these plains. Yeah, so basically you kind of get that little bit like the Ashen is this bird that brings light to the world and um, after it died, darkness kind of followed. And now here you are um, with this dude who, I like this dude with the missing arm. The cliffs ahead um, should provide a good vantage point. Beware, the rebirth of the Ashen will be violent. So now you're kind of at this age where the Ashen is going to be reborn. And we'll see all about that. That's basically the Ashen coming back to life or a new Ashen. I'm not really sure which way you're supposed to interpret that, if it's the same one or not. Um, we'll clip some stuff here. So, like Dark Souls, you can have a soul, uh, shield in one hand and a weapon in the other. There's two-handed weapons. Uh, the first time I fucking failed this miserably, and I, yeah, see, what if you're just supposed to fall down there? I don't know. But like that cricket thing gives you a stamina boost. There's health that you pick up. Um, I don't know if we'll get to it in this playthrough, but you get like a Estus Flask kind of equivalent as well. Yeah, see that's the healing thing. Um, So I don't know if I really explored around here the first time I played. Kind of like leads you down a critical path here. But there's lots of stuff tucked away in the corners. that thrive in perpetual night and would extinguish these fledgling rays. We must find the Ashen and protect it from the Elder Dark. So yeah, it's basically the setup. The Ashen is reborn and you're tasked with protecting it basically um, while it kind of expands throughout the world and uh, gets rid of the darkness sort of deal. Um, which is a little bit different than Dark Souls story in which it's just kind of dark <laughs> all the time. Um, you're trying to bring light back to it apparently, but in this situation, which we'll see shortly. Um, the light. What a 
is sight. already coming back. Our world once more bathed in ashen light. You have felt the power of the ashen and survived. We will need that strength of yours. The ashen is still a sleeping child. Vulnerable. We must wake it from its slumber. Before we begin our journey, we must bind your spirit to a ritual stone. If misadventure takes you, the stone will act as a beacon from beyond death's veil. There's a ritual stone nearby, in the district called Vagrant's Rest. But I will need my hammer and spark to awaken it. You must find them. All right, so um, we have a map, and we actually have quests, uh, which is uh, a little bit different for these types of games. We actually have things that it's guiding you to do, as opposed to just kind of saying, hey, you know, something's out there. Why don't you go find it? Um, and we also have an AI companion. Uh, Bataran's hammer and spark. Most likely the vagrants have them. They're thieves and scavengers. They'll steal anything Jocko that's with his pipe. Down. Um, and there is a multiplayer thing too, so like... It's, it, I've heard it described kind of like Journey. Where you're kind of getting matched up. Oh, matched up with... Um, a, uh, a multiplayer companions on the fly. Uh, I don't know what it's like being one of those multiplayer companions. I don't know if it's like you just happen to be in the same area and it's like they act like they just replace your AI companion or like it's if it's something you specifically like tell the game you want to do. I don't I'm not fully sure on that yet. Um, even in my other game I haven't really Check that out. Like, realize what that's all about. So yeah, I mean, you got you're using your bumpers to, uh, you know, right bumper, light attack, right trigger, heavy attack. You've got roll. Put my shield up, and I got like a shield bash. I can charge that up. Um. That's all pretty, pretty standard stuff going on there. Whoop. Ooh. Can lock on. The ranged enemies are real pains in the butts. Of course, you get stamina up there too, so that's what the combat's all about. It's all about, you know, timing it, watching your enemy, reacting to how they behave, and getting your hits in when you can. Um. So far, I haven't really encountered any. That's not true. There's been some enemies that have, um, like, like basic enemies that have given me a hard time. Uh, definitely some bosses that I've encountered that have, um, been pretty tough, but doesn't seem to be as brutal, especially early on as, uh, these games can be, which is, which is good. I don't really... <coughs> I don't really need it to be super challenging, especially because the world and story is kind of cool. I like to check that out. Whoop. And honestly, the AI companion is a huge help. Um,
So it's weird. I've found some of these, um, some other one-handed weapons. And none of them have been better so far than the, uh, this, this club you start with. I'm not a big fan of two-handed weapons, but the tutorial is asking us to use them, so we're going to use them. Yeah, so every enemy I'm killing, I'm getting some, oh, what is it called? Scoria. And that's kind of like your upgrade currency, kind of like souls. Uh, but it's not, they don't quite, they're not quite used as in the same exact way as souls are in like Dark Souls. But you do lose them if you die, which is a bummer. Nope. Bought her on Spark. So, you just got to be a little observant. Make sure you find all the little secrets they're hiding, they have hiding around here. So there's definitely a lot of stuff to find. In fact, in my other game, I need to come back here, I think. I don't know, maybe, maybe a mission has you go here. Now we gotta go back to town, give Bataran his things, and we'll get our first, essentially, bonfire. It's definitely got some similarities to Dark Souls, that's for sure. But it does do things a little bit differently. Give me my hammer, so I might awaken this sleeping stone. Touch the spark to the ritual stone. Get it. So yeah, this is the main thing that seems to be going on. Um, we just found out this town, Vagrant's Rest, and the goal seems to be to kind of build out the town. Um, and you do that by finding people out in the world, helping them out, they come back to the town, and then they start um, building shops and reconstructing the town. Um, hopefully we'll get to some of that uh, as we 
play here. Uh, I have searched these foothills and found no sign of the Ashen. We must consult Gethin of the Birthing Waters. She will know where to look. Geffen can be found bathing within the Annex of Light. Bridge the waters and strike out for the cliffs. There lies your way in. So yeah, we'll, we'll get a quest from him. Do you dream? In my sleep, I hear my brother's voice. He once traveled this way with my father. I wasn't with them. Ahu was eldest, so it was his duty. Ahu. Now he echoes through my slumber. Jackal and Ahu. Each time is the same. He stands atop an old listener ruin, calling to me. I have found the ruin by the lakeside. Will you help me climb it? And we'll get a mission from Jackal as well. Um, so... We'll get these artifacts, which... I don't think these you do anything with these they're just quest items um, then there'll be talismans which we don't have any yet except for the, the main one um, Jackal's quest so I'm pretty sure Bataran's quest is um, difficult you go down to this cave and you fight this boss and um, it's tough. I think you're supposed to wait that, like, advance a little bit before you do that one. Um, do some side quests. So we're gonna do Jockle's quest. I think Jockle's quest will bring us to um, the hunter, the hunter or trapper quest as well. Um, Oh yeah, this is this is gonna be the town eventually. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa! I haven't really been using the heavy weapons, the two-handed weapons, very much. But they seem to be pretty good, actually. I hate when you get... We have a weapon that does almost enough in a flurry to uh, kill a basic enemy, but then there's just that one sliver of health left. These uh, spear throwers are nothing once you get up. Um, so the AI companion Jocko is here with me now. They don't always follow you. It's weird, I don't know exactly how it works and sometimes they kind of like freak out and go off on their own, but we gotta help them appear. So that's showing you like the, how the AI companions and in turn, if you're playing with a real person, can help you get to somewhere, right? Um, so we picked that up, now we gotta head back up to town and give it to Jocko, who's right here. So, it's a little weird, um, the way that some of this companion system works. Um, just kinda have to accept its weirdness, I think. What I like a lot about, especially this town mechanic, is when you're out in the world and you're fighting enemies, there's like like really intense um, combat music, or there's 
like, um, like foreboding music, but then when you come to town, it's just like this little guitar riff that's playing, acoustic guitar riff. It just sounds like you're somewhere safe, you know? Which the I think is pretty cool. Has taken so many. Please, may I have Ahu's lockbox? Yeah, Joel, the game plays really well. It's so, really smooth. This is all that remains of my brother's life. A um, crimson gourd. And a crumbling oh, a crimson map. gourd. The map may lead me to my father. The crimson gourd I give to you. Touch the spark to the ritual stone, and the crimson sap will flow. The crimson sap is the very lifeblood of the earth, healing and invigorating. If you find me the right materials, I can fortify your gourd at my work table. A fortified gourd can hold more sap. Fortify my gourd, Yockel. Jockel. I don't know how you want to pronounce your name. Um, yeah, so that this, um, this gourd I just got is basically your Estes fat, Estes flask equivalent. So right now I got three swigs um, for 1600 scoria. I can upgrade it to four swigs. Um, we can talk to him again. Bataran is getting weaker. How long will it be before? But yeah, the game just power. plays really well. Like it, I he feel like I'm in real control Dorsa. of my character. To search for um, you know the whether or not you like the Dark Souls style of combat is you know up, up to interpretation, opinion. Um, I saw, a but this is a good description near Placid Stream. Like take Maybe on it, Bataran's you know. Sake, we should try to track her down. Like that part of it feels right, which is important for a game like this. Um, and you can talk to some of these villagers. Rock and bone, sing in the light as you build your home. And that they usually they only have these healing things to purchase, which you can buy. But yeah, so I helped Yakel out, Jockel, however you want to pronounce it. And now these people are here, they're rebuilding the town. Right. Um there's another one. I don't know if I get to it this way. So there's another villager down here, I think. Yeah. These people usually don't, don't have much to talk this about. This is a good place to be. Warm people, warm houses. But none of them cold ash winds to strip the flesh from your bones. And yeah, like I said, they just have the white sapote, which, um, sapote, I don't know how you're supposed to pronounce that, which is just your, your basic healing thing. Uh, Joe, thanks for stopping by. Um, yeah, this, um, this came out this week, Ashen, I think it's Xbox One and PC. Um, I'm playing it on Xbox. Um, it's kind of open world. It's... I don't know um, exactly how I would say that. It's broken up into these areas. So right now, this is the area I'm in now. And I can kind of go anywhere in this area that I want. And then you can um, you expand out the map. Um, it is kind of linear in that you're taking quests and you're doing them. and um, But you can kind of have multiple quests going on at the same time. Choose which one you want to do. So, I don't know. It's hard to pinpoint whether or not it's really open world or not. Um, now we're going to go get this lady.
Yeah, actually, it, it is kind of a little bit like Dragon Age. Um, you have a town you go back to periodically, and then you kind of can can branch out from there into uh, smaller kind of open areas. Um, why do I not have my weapons out? Usually it automatically equips your weapon. No. get to see me die. I'll be honest, I was not um, just kind of walked into that without preparing very much for it. Um, that's kind of the thing is what I was talking about with the AI companion. I'm like, I'm not sure why the AI guy didn't follow me up there and was helping me out. It, some of that's a little strange. Like, there's no commands you can give them. I can't be like, yo, Choco, follow me, or something like that. So, um, still trying to figure that out. But yeah, so when I died, I dropped all my scoria, and now I can come and pick it up. This guy dropped something cool. Yeah, you, and you, you find these things, right? You I can buy those healing items from the from the people in the town, but you also just find them on dead bodies and stuff like that. Uh, it just seems, I guess, a little less cruel than Greetings. Dark Souls. I am Vorsa. Which I'm okay with. Have you seen how the deer oh, so moved towards the light? Oh, Yako, you decided to show to up. Cool. Thanks for the but assist. But that same flame fills me with dread. I've seen you with Bataran. He has a knack for taking in strays. I was like that once. As feral as a vagrant I was. Until Bataran took me under his wing. He had two arms back then. The sickness will take the other if I don't stop it. Vorsa's the name. And yes, I'm out here hunting for a cure. You see, Bataran's not the only one who is sick. I have a few symptoms. So do most folk. Animals, too. The shorter the lifespan, the faster the illness shows up. Not every animal gets sick, though. That's why I hunt them. To find out why. You want to help? Hunt Einar with me. They're the wild hounds. Three should be enough. Okay, so I just got a quest from her. To hunt these, um, kind of like hyena dogs. They're in another area though. So this is like the first time the game's kind of like pushed you to go to a new zone. And we will check that out. Fuck. 
that pot. You're still going to bring me those Einar heads, right? From the Eye of the Needle? Listen for their warning growls. They do that to scare Raffets into holding still. Yeah, so <laughs> that lady, this lady was just up there on that rock talking to me. And now she's apparently teleported down here. Um, again, you just kind of kind of got to um, suspend your disbelief a little bit on some of that stuff. The game definitely follows its own set of rules. Thanks for helping with Vorsa. <laughs> I hope Bataran doesn't mind us asking her to come. Maybe we can help her find a cure. I would hate to lose him just as the light has returned. Ah, still haunts my dreams. Now he urges me to find our father, Vaughn. He and Ahu were very secretive about where they were going. Ahu's map is our only clue. There's a mark on the map at the Eye of the Needle. I think we should start our search there. Okay. So... I don't think I have enough to level up the um, Crimson Gourd. So I will talk to this guy real quick. There's no skags this girl. About here. I'll buy one of these just to make sure I'm good. So probably didn't notice it, but when I completed that quest, my health bar got a little bigger. Um, that seems to be the way you quote unquote level up in this game and and increase your stats there's no like um all right joe thanks for stopping by um appreciate it and yeah i think it's a it's a pretty cool game um if you have xbox games pass i don't know if you do um it's on there right now it's um you can play it without having to buy the game, but I think it's only like 40 bucks anyway, so uh, definitely seems to be worth the price. Uh, but yeah, that's how you level up, you kind of do quests as opposed to spending souls or something like that. And yeah, I'm not sure what I think about that. Um, I haven't played the game enough to kind of make an informed decision on whether or not I like it better than Spending Souls. I guess it depends on Nice man, I'll add you up. Uh, yeah, I'm just not sure uh, yet. Like, if, if the quests stay good and the quests don't, like, you, you never know. Like, you could get some quests that just seems impossible to do, and then you kind of just like stalemate, right? That's kind of like what grinding for souls and dark souls allows you to do is if you at a spot where you're stuck, you can kind of grind for souls and level yourself up out of the the hole you dug yourself into or whatever. Um, but that's not going to be possible if, you know, the only way you level up in this game is with quests. So I guess that's something you'll, we'll see how it goes sort of deal. Right now it seems all right because 
less anxiety around losing a whole bunch of souls, I guess. Wow, look at all these guys. Yakko's with me on this one. Yeah, I mean, we're just in this first area here. We can keep exploring here. Um, I kind of want to complete the hunter quest just to show you a little bit more of the leveling up of the town. Oh! Mechanic. This guy's got a shield. So I'm gonna... All right, maybe not all do that. Some of the enemy, like kiting and. Um, aggro seems to favor you even if they're getting pounded by the AI companion. Ouch. And then this dude is just hanging out here. Get him. Whoops. If we strike out into the unknown too soon, we shall forget what we have already learned. Beyond the waters and beneath the cliffs, that's where our enlightenment awaits. So I'm not sure if, like, he's telling me there that I'm supposed to do a different quest before I do this one. down here anyway. And then this dude's real tough. Um, I think he's supposed to be like, yo, you're not supposed to be down here, but he's not that tough. like a little town here there's like these people Welcome can talk to them. not really sure what's going on here but I'm gonna buy a couple of these uh, I think these creatures I'm supposed to hunt are down here they can be kind of tough because they behave differently than 
other enemies. But me and Jocko, we got this, you know, how we do. We just need to kill three of them. Not that big of a deal. Whoa! We could keep continuing here, but I'm just gonna head back. Hey Josh. Uh yeah, I'm digging this game too. It's uh it's pretty good. Um it's on Xbox and PC. I don't I'm not hundred percent sure if it's on PlayStation. Um You'd have to look that up to be 100% on that. But I know it's definitely Xbox and PC. I'm on Xbox right now. Um, it's on um, Game Pass. So that is how I'm playing it. Uh, we're just making our way back to town here. Whoop. Hello. Okay. No biggie. So that's not as powerful. So I'm going to go back to town, I'm going to talk to the hunter lady, have her, I think she gives me spears, and then we're going to check out the cave over there, which I know is tough, like I know it's a, it ends in a pretty brutal boss fight. We're gonna give it a shot. Why not, right? If we die, well, that's just the the name of the game. Um, actually, gonna head over here and collect some stuff around here first. See if we can't level up that gourd. Oh, okay. Craven rem remnants. Those are. Uh, those get you back to base if you're uh, like like exploring and you want to just quickly get back to base without uh, running all the way back or something like that. Pretty useful. I'm gonna pop some of these and see what where that brings me. Okay. That'll get me a upgrade, which is good. So now I got four uses of that. Four swigs of the gourd, if you will. Now see, she's totally building up this building over here now that she is 
established yourself For here. studying Bataran, I have learned to spot the light's telltale marks. A blemish here, a twitch of the eye there. Early signs not to be ignored. Now hand me those Einar heads so I can take a good look at them. Their eyes and ears will tell me much. Brains too, once I crack open these skulls. Voice acting and dialogue is really good. See these raised blemishes on the ears and nose? Signs of sickness for sure. These Einar seem no more resistant than you or I. <sighs> we must look elsewhere. A good hunter needs a good spear, and my spears are better than most. Come see my workbench. There might be a spear with your name on it. Yeah, so that just gave me a uh, health boost. And now I've unlocked the ability to make spears. So let's make a bunch of spears. Bataran is strong, but the sickness is proving stronger. We must hurry. There's a beast that stands taller than a listener. It digs into the ash. A cord. These creatures can survive and even thrive in the ash of the stormed ruins. I've watched them spit their bile into the ash before digging. That bile is our key. Okay. Uh, we won't do that now. What we're going to do is this main journey see how far we can get on this then I'll probably wrap it up sure about fall damage how brutal that is uh, we gotta go over here take this guy out who's got his shield and his club I love the combat music. It's like just this heavy drum beat. That's okay, there is a save spot down here somewhere. I'll go get this treasure. Apparently if you wade too far out into deep water, you die. Haven't tested that. I'm just assuming what the people have been telling me are is correct. There's been, I don't know if you heard that, like the music cutting out there, the, there's been some weird audio things like that. I haven't noticed any frame rate issues, just the audio being a little weird. I don't know what's up with that. There we go. Now we'll jump over here. Whoa. Ooh. <laughs> Almost didn't make that. Back. 
jump feels pretty good. Hey Derek, this is Ashen, it's kind of like Dark Souls, but it's a little different, and that's okay, it's pretty cool. Hello. The darkness hungers within these buried halls. Take this lantern, lest the starving shadows consume you. So this is a cool aspect of the game it's this lantern um like the light is returning to the surface but it's still dark in caves and stuff so you need the lantern to um to kind of navigate these areas Yeah, this is the um, the forgot to put on lotion. Uh, the dark souls of not putting on lotion, basically. Yeah, the art style is really good. It's the faces, love or hate them. They're just kind of super simple, but um, it's very. Very cohesive, I guess I'll say. I think drinking the sap. Oh, okay, that refills the gourd. Okay. The gourd's like my Estes flask. Um, yeah, just simple and like it's got it's got a style. That's for sure. Oh, these fucking spider things. I forgot. I mean, they spit acid or something. Speckled mushroom slowly generates a good amount of your health. Okay. Where are we going now? So yeah, see how fucking dark it is with the lantern off? I mean, we got Jockle here with the lantern, so it's not completely dark. Whoa! Oh, Jesus. So yeah, like I said, I, I played this part before on my other game, and there is a boss coming up, and I don't know how well I'm going to do against that. second. Oh, it's just a climb up. Weird. Yeah, that's the hole. Once I go down there, that's it.
feel like I'm doing better than I was the last time. We got this dude. You and me, Yako. Ooh, that hurt. Where'd he go? There. Oh! That was cheap. Oh, shit! Fuck! Get him! Or help me up. Yes, help me up. Good. Woo! Where'd he go? Ooh. Yes! Victory! Yeah, these, these dungeons um, are pretty cool, the way that the light is used. Like I said, when I, it's kind of like, I mean, there's, there's light going on in here, but up there it was like completely pitch black. Um, just seems really cool and like in line with like the themes of the game in a lot of ways. What the fuck? Holy shit. You know, like the, it's all about returning light to the darkness and stuff like that. And I think it all just works really well together. Hello. You have slain an elder dog. Amara. That is surprising. You have earned the right to see the mother of the birthing waters, if you wish. Geffen, this traveler has come to seek your wisdom. What's going on here? Oh, Whoa, holy shit. up This doom, you must seek out the heart of the Thyrus. The heart was crafted long ago when listener and human were united in hope. It captured and focused the light of the Ashen and allowed them to commune with it. When the Ashen died, human and listener blamed each other. War raged. 
vanished as darkness fell. Matriarch Amiren sundered the heart and took the listener half to protect her people. If you wish to protect the Ashen from the Elder Dark, you must recover the broken heart. To help you in your quest, I give to you this echo. Amara was once seer of Lathyrus. I bind her to you until the heart is found. Alright, I don't know what that means, but... See ya! Cool. So Mara's gonna be back at the town. This is fucking cool. Is there something over there? Like, can I go over there? <sighs> I'm drowning. Oh shit! Oh shit! Oh no! That sucks. Well, that was dumb. But... Inevitable. Anyway, uh, that's probably going to wrap it up. Um, this game's pretty cool. Uh, it's easy to just look at it and say, oh, this is just Dark Souls, but it's it's more than that. There's more going on. And I like how it's a little bit more willing to explain itself <laughs> than Dark Souls can be. Sometimes Dark Souls can be real frustrating because it's like, um, what the fuck's going on? What do you want me to do? And this has quests, it has um, certainly a somewhat cohesive story that doesn't require uh, wiki to um, figure out or, you know, read a thousand Reddit posts or something like that just to figure out what one character is trying to tell you about the world um so like i lost when, when i fell into that water i lost my scoria and it's down in that dungeon there and i might go back and get it i might not um the good thing about the way that they do the leveling up and stuff in this game is that just because i lost all those all that stuff that I've collected doesn't mean I can't level up. Doesn't mean I, I'm not going to make any progress. Just means there's certain things I can't afford to buy. Um, which isn't nearly as damning as not being able to make progression in the game. Um, so I'm going to see. I'm going to return to Bataran. Uh, see, um, see how the town's doing. Looks like it's doing pretty well. What is this? What is going on here? Holy shit. You claimed a reward from your battle in the Annex. However, I sense a great darkness within it. May I see it? Three Elder Dark once stalked these benighted lands. Now there are but two. I'm sure that Amara will make good use of Okoto's corrupted face. As you can see, I have created an anvil upon which to forge the ash. Bring your weapons to the anvil so that I may reforge them and make them stronger. Nice. All right, that's cool. Okay. Yep. So he used the scoria to 
to upgrade your weapons as well. Okay. Definitely is all starting to make sense. Uh, and I'm really liking it. So I'm probably going to keep playing this. Um, yeah, so that's Ashen. Uh, it's out now on at least PC and Xbox. Let me check. Um, let me check. If it is out on anything else, PS4. I know it's not on Switch. Is Ashen coming to PS4? That means it's not out right now. So, yeah, Xbox and PC, and um, on Xbox Game Pass, which is where I'm playing it right now. Um, hey, Cecil, uh, thanks for tuning in. I'm just wrapping it up, but um, this is Ashen on Xbox. Uh, it's kind of like Dark Souls, but it's got a lot of different cool things going on. Um, it's uh, it's pretty cool. Um, so that's gonna wrap it up, and thanks for tuning in and. We will see you next time.